Hi, my name is Ajay Nuka. I'm the director of the Malamo program at Emory University. At ASCO 2023, I presented the results of the maintenance therapy with Carfilzomib palmitoid and dexamethasone in high-risk myeloma patients, a phase two study with a safety run-in on behalf of all my co-authors. Cytogenetically defined high-risk myeloma patients have poor progression to survival and overall survival compared to the standard risk patients, as you can see in the, in the cartoon on the right, with median PFS at 77 months and median P for the standard risk patients and median PFS for high-risk patients of 42 months. Similarly, the median overall survival favoring the standard risk patients compared to the high-risk patients. In this group of patients, attaining deep responses are feasible with optimal modern-day induction regimens, but fixed duration of therapies may not be applicable for these groups, and continued combination maintenance probably could give us the best benefit for these patients in the long run. And this has been shown in multiple prior studies, including prospective trials like the Forte. We have evaluated the combination maintenance therapy with carfilzomib, palmitoid, and dexamethasone, the KPD regimen in high-risk myeloma patients with a safety run -in. The patients that had the presence of deletion 17P, translocation 414, translocation 1416, or the presence of primary plasma cell leukemia with more than 20% plasma cells on the peripheral blood were included in the, uh, in the study. The induction therapy of choice was left up to the physician. And among patients who received a uh, stem cell transplant, patients were, were enrolled within 12 months of the diagnosis. And these patients should be eligible to receive maintenance treatment. That fills me at a dose of 56 milligram per meter squared on days 1, 8, 15, 28. Omletamide at a dose of 2 milligram given on days 1 to 21 on a 28 day basis, as well as dexamethasone at 40 milligram on days 1, 8, 15, 22 on a 28 day basis was used as a maximal planned dose with an incorporated dose level reductions with dose levels minus 1 and minus 2. The first safety run was done among the first three patients with the maximum planned dose. No do dose limiting toxicities were seen. A mini max two stage design was utilized to assess the efficacy of the disease. Efficacy. A mini max two stage design was utilized to assess the efficacy. An interim analysis was conducted after the first 19 patients were evaluated. The patients received KPD for a period of three years or until progression, whichever occurred, whichever occurred early for a primary endpoint of more than complete response rate. The statistical assumptions used, were, used are the null hypothesis of greater than complete response rate of 35%, with an alternate hypothesis of greater than res complete response rate of 60%, accounting for a 5% type 1 error and 90% power to detect, detect the effect, effectiveness, and a 90% power to detect the effectiveness of KPD maintenance. Altogether, 29 patients were eligible for the trial. Median age of the diagnosis was 59.6 years. Blacks accounted for more uh, patients in the study, accounting for 60%. High-risk patients inclu uh, included, as alluded to before, deletion 17P patients, translocation 414, translocation 1416, as well as primary plasma cell leukemia. If you look at <laughs> those patients that had more than one cytogenetic abnormality, that accounted for 60% of all the patients. Most patients received either a triplet regimen or a, or a quadruplet regimen as induction therapy. Primary endpoint was the greater than complete response rate, which was seen in 25% of the patients prior to the study entry at the baseline, which escalated to an 89.7% the, as the best response, and the median time to best, best response was uh, two months. The secondary endpoints were the MRD negativity. MRD negativity at 10 to the power of minus six was seen in 66.67% of the patients, and MRD negativity at 10 to, 10 to the power of minus five was seen in 90% of the patients. So if you look at the correlation of MRD negativity and hematological response, see more than complete response rate was correlating with MRD negativity at 10 to, 10 to the power of minus six and 90% of the patients. The sec other secondary endpoints were the progression-free survival, at a median follow-up of 30.5 months from the study entry and median follow-up of 40 months from the, uh, from the time of the diagnosis, at a median follow-up of 30.5 months from the study entry and at a median follow-up of 40 months from the, uh, from the diagnosis, the median PFS was not reached. Estimated four-year PFS was 54%. Median PF, PFS by MRD, those patients that achieved an MRD negativity at 10 to the power of minus six, did not have a median PFS reach, but those patients that were MRD positive at, at 10 to the power of minus six had a median PFS of 44.3 months. Similarly, those patients that were MRD 
positive at, an, at, at a threshold of 10 to the power of minus five had a median PFS of 28.8 months. Coming to the secondary endpoints of overall survival, at a median follow-up of 30.5 months from the time of study entry and 44.5 months from the time of diagnosis, the median overall survival has not been reached. The estimated four-year overall, overall survival was 67%. The estimated four-year overall survival was 67%. Median PFS and overall survival by the cytogenetic risk, those patients that progress all have the double hit disease or having more than one cytogenetic abnormality. Those patients that had more than one high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities had a median PFS of 30.6 months. And none of the patients that had less th that had only one high-risk abnormality died during the uh, clinical trial. Second, uh, coming to the safety profile as a secondary endpoint, hypophosphatemia, muscle cramps, hypomagnesemia, headaches, agitation, and rash remained the most common adverse events seen uh, during the study. Coming to hematological toxicities, neutropenia was seen in 55.2%, and most of these are grade three, four toxicities. Anemia was seen in close to 14% of the patients and thrombocytopenia in 10% of the patients. Coming to the non-hematological adverse events of interest, cataracts were seen in five patients among 17% of the patients, and one patient had a CVA who unfortunately uh, chose to go to hospice at a later time. Atrial fertile was seen in four patients, accounting for less than 15% of, uh, of the patient population. So at the time of the data cutoff, eight patients continued to have ongoing treatment, eight patients completed the study, and progressive disease was seen in 10 patients. So there was two, two patients that have decided to opt for uh, opt out of the trial. There are two patients that decided to opt out of, out of the trial due to a CVA and one from palpitations, uh, one due to commute. So progressive disease remains the major reason for mortality, and one patient had a non-relapsed mortality who chose to uh, go off the study uh, due to a CVA. So these results compare very well to the ongoing studies, either from our RVD experience or the SWOG trial using RVD plus ERA2 SMAB, and the MASTER trial uh, using data tumma plus KRD and the GMMG concept study using the ESA plus KRD. These studies, uh, the current study date has a greater than CR rate of 89.7%. Similarly, the PFS rate also is compatible for the existing studies with the estimated four-year PFS of 54% and a four-year overall survival of 67%, which is significantly better than what was reported previously. So these data support that the combination maintenance strategy should be used for the high-risk cytogenetics, similar to what was seen in the Forte trial using the combination of cutfulcinol lenalidomide as maintenance therapy uh, among patients with high-risk disease. In patients with high-risk myeloma, KPD combination maintenance has been shown to be safe, well-tolerated, and efficacious. The primary endpoint of greater than the CR was achieved in 89.7% of the patients, and MRD negativity at 10 to the power of minus 6 was seen in 66.7% and 10 to the power of minus 5 seen in 86.7% of the patients. The median PFS and overall survival have been have the median PFS and overall survival have not been reached at a median follow-up of 30 months from the study entry and 40 months from the initial diagnosis. There were no new adverse events of concern. The presence of double hit disease is a predictor for progression and death and will need innovative strategies to prevent relapse. The current results support the exploration of this combination maintenance with KPD in the future studies. I'd like to thank my co-investigators as well as all the myeloma patients.